welcome back to my channel. Here's the Momo. <laughs> He's so freaking cute. Hey guys, so today we're gonna be doing a baking slash cooking video, just an apple themed recipe video because I went apple picking maybe two weeks ago now. So much fun and we got like 50 apples. We gave 10 away that I made an apple crumble last week, which used like six of them. Recipe on the blog. And anyways, we still have a ton of apples. So I wrote down a ton of recipes that we're gonna have fun with and experiment today. If you want the recipes, then I'm gonna leave a link below. I made a cute little ebook so you can go download that. Basically, as I mentioned, I started a blog and I was taking a blogging course and one of the things that she said to do was to grow your mailing list and a good way to do that is to make ebooks and then people can get the ebook for free if they give you your email. And don't worry, I have no intentions of sending an email anytime soon because I have too much else to think about right now. So I promise I won't spam you. And then that way you can get all the recipes for free. Also, now we, you hear meowing? It's not meow. This video is going to totally throw off the whole queue of all my previous videos and ones to come. Before I started posting, I, Maui, Mau, Mau, can't you just let me talk? Why are you gonna do this to me? Simmies, <laughs> you're crazy. Yeah, yeah, you're crazy. Okay, yeah, so I pre-filmed a few videos before I started actually posting this last week. And there are a few more to come, but I wanted to post this one in between all of that, just in case you guys are in the same boat as me and you did go apple picking as well and you have a million. I just wanted to post this at the same time that I'm filming it so that you can actually play around with any of the recipes. Maui, baby, can you please not? Oh my goodness. Sammy's, why are you like this? You're looking, you're so cute. Yeah. Why are you such a goose? Mm. Sammy's. Okay, now I forgot what I was saying, but basically, yeah, I'm posting this out of order, essentially. And that's why, so that if you guys want to make some apple recipes, well, you have a bunch, you can. But yeah, if it's confusing now because I'm gonna post a few more and they're gonna be more from the summertime and it might be a little weird because it is October. I'm probably gonna post this tomorrow, if not on Sunday. So yeah, okay, that's all, that's my spiel. Got hair in my mouth. Okay, so today, yes, we're gonna be making a ton of apple recipes and we'll have some chats and stuff, but let's get started on the recipes. And you guys are lopsided. I'm sorry, my tripod is weird. I need to get a better one. So yeah, we have like five or six, seven, I don't know. We have a few recipes that we're gonna play around with today. I already started to already this morning because they take a couple of hours, so I just wanted to get them going. So first, I started making apple cider. Oh my gosh, cannot explain how good my house smells right now. Apple cider is a totally natural candle. So basically a good two in one, you get your house to smell delicious. And then you also get delicious tasty cider at the end. So I have it cooking right now, I'll just show you. Look, get it going. And you can see the timer there. We still have an hour and a half until it's ready. Apple cider is incredibly easy to make. You just pop a bunch of apples into a large pot. You cut them, I like to remove the core, but you don't really have to. And I always leave the skin on just to make life easier, it tastes good. And then you throw in whatever seasoning you'd like. So I put a little bit of cinnamon. I use just pumpkin pie spice, that's all I have. But you can do apple pie spice, you can do all spice, some cinnamon sticks and some brown sugar. And then you just cover it with water and you bring it to a boil for an hour. And then you reduce to simmer for two hours. Maui. Why are you like this? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll let you out. <laughs> you silly thing, you already out all morning. Bobo, you wanna go outside? Bobo, you wanna go outside, baby? Hi. 
Yeah, you can thank your brother for being crazy. You get to go out. Mm hmm. What? What is it? Okay, you guys be good. All right, now it's just us. Finally, I can think. <laughs> so yeah, basically you just bring the pot to a boil for an hour and then you reduce the heat to low and you just simmer for two. And then we basically just strain it and I'll show you when we get to there. But yeah, got some apple cider going. The house smells freaking delicious. If you're only gonna do one of these recipes, this is the one. Oh, you can also add, if you have any oranges hanging around, you can add like one or two sliced oranges as well. I did that last year, but this year I totally forgot to add oranges. But yeah, my house smells 10 out of 10. And then I also started making some applesauce and I made this in my Instant Pot. I've never done this before, but it seems really, really easy. So hopefully it all turns out okay. So all I did was take three pounds of apples. So that worked out to be about six. It obviously it depends on how big your apples are. And you peel it and you take out the core and then you just chop it up into, you know, one inch, just kind of big chunks really. And you can leave the skin on if you prefer your applesauce to be chunkier, it's up to you. Then you throw in some seasoning again, so some cinnamon, and I did more pumpkin pie spice, a little bit of brown sugar and lemon juice and a quarter cup of water. Super simple, you turn it on and you cook on high for five minutes. So in total it takes about 40 minutes because it takes 15 minutes to warm up. Then it actually just pressure cooks for five and then you let it, um, depressurize and let the steam come out for another like 20 minutes and now it should be ready so i'm gonna check on it and see if it's any good okay hopefully you can see oh smells so good this is like the epitome of fall right now i'm i'm happy all right so there's two methods here now that we can do i'm gonna first try out a potato masher this is probably gonna end up with the potatoes <laughs> the applesauce being a little bit on the chunkier side, which I feel like I might like, but if you want it to be really smooth, go in with your immersion blender or just scoop it all out and put it in your blender and blend it up until it's nice and smooth. So I tried mashing it and it wasn't horrible, but it was definitely really chunky and I feel like I want it to be kind of smooth. So I whipped out my immersion blender and that worked perfectly. And now we have a really smooth, beautiful looking applesauce. It is very liquidy but as it cools down, it's going to thicken up quite a bit and become a more traditional consistency of applesauce that you might expect. I made pretty much four cups, a little bit more. I was able to fill a one liter mason jar and then a tiny little bowl. It's still steaming, but I really want to try it. So let's hope I don't burn my tongue. Oh, oh my God. <gasps> Oh my gosh, who needs dessert when you can have this? Mmm. Oh my gosh, that is really, really good. It just, it tastes like applesauce, but the little bit of cinnamon. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how easy that was to make. Okay, definitely you guys gotta try that. I'm going to clean up now and take a couple of photos for my ebook. And then we'll make some cookies. That's the next recipe. I'm excited. I haven't made cookies in forever i never make dessert because i cannot resist so <laughs> like ah oh, okay <laughs> because i cannot resist eating it all right away it is so hard for me i'm really gluttonous i just do not have any self-control when it comes to pretty much anything <laughs> but definitely food but i'm going to make all of these cookies and then i'll just i'll have one obviously and then I'm just gonna freeze the rest because we're having a Halloween party in two weeks and I'll pull them out of the freezer the night before so that I can serve them to all of our guests. I love having parties, I swear, just so I can try all these different recipes and actually have someone to feed instead of me ending up eating it all. So yeah, okay, I will be back in a second. Okay, ready to make some cookies. These are like an apple, cranberry, oat style cookie. I'm very, very excited. To my large mixing bowl, I'm going to add one cup of oats. These are large flake oats, but I think any kind of oat really that you have will be fine. You know, if you have quick oats or something, that will work too. Then we're gonna do three fourths a cup of all-purpose flour. You can also use whole wheat flour too. 
bread flour, I really doubt it will make much of a difference. So use whatever you have. Then we've got one teaspoon of baking powder, one eighth a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cinnamon. And then lastly, I'm gonna do half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, but you can definitely, like I said before, use apple pie spice, cloves, allspice, whatever you got really. And we'll just mix the dry ingredients together. All right, and to a separate bowl, I've cracked one egg and I'm just gonna whisk it up. Then I'm gonna pour in two tablespoons of melted butter or 30 grams, however you measure. Half a cup of maple syrup. You can also do, if you have really runny honey, that will also work totally fine. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Already smells delicious, I'm very excited. Mm. All right, now we're gonna add, this is one apple that I just grated or, yeah, I grated it with a cheese grater into these lovely chunks. You could probably use a food processor, I mean, whatever. Whatever works for you. And I've also got roughly half a cup of cranberries. These are the dried, sweetened kind. Really gotta resist the urge to try the dough because it looks so yummy. It's about how what I got for my vegan days when I wouldn't put egg in, but I guess you're not supposed to eat raw egg, although all the crunchy people eat raw eggs. So maybe there's nothing wrong with it, whatever. <laughs> so now we're gonna scoop it out into, shape them into little cookies and put them on a baking tray. And I have preheated the oven to 350 Fahrenheit. Kiddos are back inside, they behaved. Are you a good girl? Yeah, I love you, Wops. I love you. Thanks for being such a good boy. I love you. <laughs> hey, Wops. Mm. Oh, hello. What's my bubbling? Those spinkies. Oh my gosh. Why are you so beautiful? Why are you so pretty? Such a beautiful girl. Such a beautiful girl. All right, cookies are in the oven. They have to cook for 15 minutes. And in the meantime, actually we have more to make, but I had to talk. Oh my God, why are you being so cute? Why are you being so cute? Oh my gosh. If you ever see my chairs and wonder why they're destroyed, this is why, because she just loves to attack them. Yes. yes. Goodness, she's so perfect. She's beautiful. Oh gosh, look at you. You're so pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, so I don't want to talk too much about this because honestly, everyone has an opinion and everyone is talking about it and it really annoys me. <laughs> So now I'm doing exactly what other people do that annoys me so much. But I just wanted to briefly say, oh, now the camera's dying. Oh my gosh, okay, hold on. Okay, yes, so I just wanted to say that it is okay to not pick a side, to not stand with anyone or any country and to just overall not support war and to instead just wish and call for peace and to support all of the innocent civilians that are going to be harmed by this conflict and every future conflict and to not get swept up in the propaganda now propaganda i feel like people often think that that means that it's fake and that's not necessarily what i mean but they always liked the media likes to spread these images that will get you very very emotional so that you will support war and you have to try to take, take a step back. Yes, what you are seeing is very sad and very heartbreaking. There's no question about that. But that does not justify governments now stealing more of our money to go fund other wars to kill more innocent civilians. I mean, that, that's pretty much the crux of it. I could, <laughs> I could elaborate, but I don't know that it's necessarily necessary. And there are plenty of other people who are going to explain that way better than me. But I just wanted to say that because all the time people are like, oh, you have to pick a side or you have to stand with this side or, or these people. And if you 
just want to take a step back and say, I don't support any of this. I don't support war then you're some like something's wrong with you and I don't think that's true at all. And that when you let the images make you so emotional that you are just like gung-ho, war, 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 then the people behind this conflict and every future and past conflict are going to know that and they're going to continue to utilize that so that they can create more war and more conflict because what do they get out of all that? Power and money. They get more power, they get more money every single time and it's okay to not support that and to understand that you do not need to pick a side. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not the greatest at explaining that kind of thing, but I just wanted to say that that's where I stand and that I think that it is totally okay if you also think that way. Yeah, again, I'm not saying that one side is right or one, one side is wrong. I think that the whole thing is bad <laughs> and that the governments that hold people hostage like this are really the ones that we should be upset at. And instead of fighting and going, oh, I'm on the side and you're on that side and so I don't like you, let's just recognize that it's the 99% against the 1% that causes all the wars all the fucking time and kills all the innocent civilians all the time. And if you look at this conflict and the same, like it's the same playbook. Maui, gosh, I can never talk to you guys. Maui! It's the same playbook every single time and often, cookies out of the oven and yeah just one one more quick note that just like in wars past usually governments will fund the terrorist group that will cause some kind of catastrophe that will then rally the country and they want that because they want you to want to fund another war because they get more money and more power and i know that might sound like a conspiracy theory but it's not like literally if you look at who funded hamas and just the whole history behind it it's pretty clear that we're being manipulated yet again. And try not to let your emotions take over and to instead take a step back and recognize that another war is no good for anyone. And that really there's nothing wrong with supporting, wanting to support and bolster your own country before you send more resources and more soldiers to another country. I mean, my country, Canada, and probably the same where you live too because everything is fucked right now. Canada's falling apart. And I don't want to take more resources and go have our country go more into debt to support war in another country and support killing more innocent people. <sighs> okay, that's all I'm gonna say. You can disagree, that's totally fine, but that's where I stand. And go check out Dave Smith. He did a really good episode this morning I was listening to, talking about the history of the whole conflict a little bit more. But yeah, nothing wrong with being anti-war. He's lucky he's so cute. You're already back at it? Why are you like this? Why are you gonna do this to me? Why are you gonna do this to me, hey? What a good bobolene. Thank you for being so good. All right, so yeah, okay. I'm so sorry because I really don't want this channel to be about current events on a regular basis or anything like that because it's just so negative and it really brings down the vibe and I want you guys to feel good when you watch my videos. But I had to, I just had to say it because gosh, it's like never ending war, one to the next to the next and people are always just so like into it. Like they love war and they don't, I don't know. It makes me sad. <laughs> so now we're gonna make the cider. It's been cooking for three hours total and we're just gonna strain it now and it should be ready to eat. So I've got a big bowl here and I've got a fine mesh strainer or colander and you could also put cheesecloth and now all we're going to do is pour it to strain off all the solids and then we'll have some delicious cider. Now with these solid chunks, I did this last year. I'm kind of just a little too lazy to do it this year. I really should. But what you can do is just scoop that all out, put it into a bowl and blend that up and it'll be a kind of really thick, chunky applesauce. So that's also an option. Just remove obviously the cinnamon sticks. So far we are doing really, really good. The cookies, I already have one, delicious. And they're not too sweet as well. You can tell it's just maple syrup and fruit. Like it's very natural tasting, which I love. I really hate desserts that are so, like it's just you taste sugar. It's like you're just eating sugar. I don't like that. These are very, very good. And the apple cider I actually haven't tried yet. Let's have a sip. Oh, oh yeah, so good.
so good. So I made two whole glasses and then pretty much a whole mason jar, around five cups, I guess, total. So good, so easy. Definitely try these out. Okay, so now we're gonna make some apple fritters. These are awesome because they're a very high amount of apple to batter ratio and they're just really good. So, got an apple here and we're going to core it. And then we're gonna try to slice it thinly into rings. If you have a, is it called a mandolin? You know the slicer things? Definitely use that because then you'll get them all to be the same size. But I'm too lazy. Like so. And we'll put that off to the side. And to make the batter, it's super simple. It's pretty much just flour and milk and a few other things. So I'm gonna hack the recipe just because these are the kind of things that you wanna eat right away and I don't want to be tempted by too many. So I'm gonna have the recipe that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys in the ebook. So I'm gonna do just half a cup of flour and then half a cup of milk, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, two tablespoons of sugar, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, one tablespoon melted butter, and then one egg. Whisk it all up. And now we have a runny batter to dip the apples in. Okay, so I have a hot pan going with olive oil and I just put some of the apples in there. So all I did is I take the apple ring, I dip it, dip it into my batter, and then I just add it to the pan. And then after a minute or two, you can flip it. So it's kind of like a pancake. Oh my gosh, okay, I just tried these. They are so good. I sprinkled it with a little bit of powdered sugar. And as you can see, it made a ton. And this was only one apple. So definitely have some friends over when you make these. It's literally like a pancake with a huge apple in the middle. Really, really good. Alrighty, you guys, for the very last recipe, I'm just going to be doing a voiceover because Maui was just losing it. I really don't know why he was extra crazy today. He's always a little bit crazy, but I've never really seen him be this insane. So I don't know what's going on with him, my crazy little boy, but that's okay. I still recorded everything and I will just voice over now and tell you what I did. So I started off by slicing one apple. You can use one or two, it depends what you're feeling into relatively thin, I don't know, not super thin, but also not thick slices. And then I also take some pork tenderloin and I slice it up into about two centimeters thick and season quite liberally with salt and pepper. Then I'm gonna heat one tablespoon of butter in a large pan, melt that down, and then add all of the apples. Fry over medium heat for three minutes per side. Just basically you want the apple to be golden and slightly caramelized, and then you're gonna remove that and put onto a bowl or just somewhere, set it aside basically for later. And then now to the pan, you're gonna add all of the pork pieces and cook for two to three minutes per side. Remove that, and then you're gonna add two diced onions, three cloves of minced garlic, and as much bacon as you want. I only used two pieces because I didn't have that much left, but you can go up to five. The more bacon, the merrier. Bacon always makes everything taste delicious. So add some sliced diced bacon pieces and fry for about four minutes. Then you're gonna pour in a quarter cup of chicken broth and add some fresh sprigs of thyme and sage. These are from the garden, so fun. And then bring that to a rolling simmer. Then you're gonna reduce the heat and pour in one cup of half and half or whipping cream or whatever kind of cream you have lying around will be fine. And then add the pork and the apples back to the pan and let that cook and simmer for about five minutes just until the sauce has thickened a little bit. And then you can serve this with mashed potatoes or rice or steamed greens. It is kind of liquidy and stewy. So something where the sauce can get absorbed like with rice is really, 
really good and this is just such a fun recipe like this is the kind of thing you'd expect to have at a fancy restaurant this isn't a normal thing that you'd make on a regular basis so it's a really fun way to incorporate apples into your dinner and i really really loved it so definitely give it a try okay that is officially everything that's all of my apple recipes seriously tell me how this took me six hours to film <laughs> i'm really tired now i'm gonna go Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely sign up for my mailing list that I will send you the ebook with all of the recipes for you to try. There's a couple of bonus ones that I did make today as well that you can check out. And just check out gwensfarmhouse.com in general for more recipes and home decor and things like that. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Gwen the Milkmaid. And also check out my new business that will be launching November 14th, themilkmaidsupplyco.com. And oh, I will leave a link to a couple of podcasts in the description box in case you want to know, in case you want to know a little bit more about my thought process because I'm not here to argue. I'm not going to argue with you in the comments, so don't try. Just go listen to those and then you'll understand a little bit more about my perspective. And yeah, okay, love you lots. I hope you have an amazing weekend and I will see you again on Wednesday. Bye.